everyone and welcome to this video Song Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield. Now, today I've got um, a wee bit of something, well, kind of um, special in store. Now, do you remember th this laptop? Some of uh, you VSF viewers will actually remember it. I got it um, last fall from, well, last autumn from um, the same free cycler who gave me the Toshiba Satellite Pro, uh, no, the Toshiba Tecra 800 and the Time laptop that um, I refurbished in 2011 um, to give to someone who was on the Shmoo Works course with me. Um, well, well, VSF viewers won't remember that, but uh, Blue Planet 64 viewers will. Well, on this machine, I've decided it's time for a CPU upgrade. I did originally buy the CPU upgrade for the uh, Packard Bell EZ1 Silver. However, it, um, that machine used a desktop processor, and unfortunately, um, it had broken. So, I've decided not to waste this upgrade. I've decided to put it in here instead. As you can see, CPU Z is actually running on this machine. And as you can see, I'm running an Intel Celeron Coppermine. Um, and it's running at 650 megahertz, which is all very well and good. However, this here is an Intel Pentium 3 running at 800 megahertz. So I'm going to put this in here. Now before I do that, I'm going to want to shut down the machine. First I'm, I'm going to actually copy over the uh, CPU Z file so I don't have to plug a flash disk in. Um, whoops. I'm just going to copy that over. There we go. Now, first thing I'm going to need to do is shut down the machine. And cut power to it. Now, like a lot of the older Toshibas, this unit, to remove everything from this unit, well, to get to the CPU, I'll need to lift up the keyboard and take off this top cover, which is actually attached to the screen. Quite an interesting way of doing things. Um, so, I will go and do that, and thanks to the magic of video editing, I'll be right back. Now, when you're working on laptops, remember you do have two power sources. The AC power and, of course, the battery. Now, I know it might seem like I am stating the obvious here, but, um, you know, when you're getting carried away in the moment with the upgrades and what have you, you might forget to remove the battery. But in this, in this case... That's kind of um, necessary to be able to perform the upgrade because um, some of the screws to remove the top cover are actually located under the battery. But yes, like with anything, it is essential that if you're working on anything electrical that you remove the battery first. Disconnect from all power sources. Okay, so that's uh, the laptop opened. Next thing that needs to happen is this heat sink needs to come off. Which means these five screws need undone. Okay. So now we're at the meat and tatties of the operation. 
So, I'm just going to get a flat headed screwdriver to open the CPU socket. Taking out the old Intel celery chip. And now it's time for the new Intel Pentium 3 chip. Now for those of you who've never actually installed a CPU before, if you'll notice on the CPU socket there's a key or a missing socket in the top right corner and that will correspond with the missing pin on the actual CPU. Now what you want to do to install a CPU is just kind of drop it gently in. You don't want to force it down. When it's in what you want to do is lock the CPU socket. There we go. That's now back in place. And then we want to take some thermal paste. In this case we're going to use some uh, Arctic Silver. And we're going to apply just a wee drop of it onto the CPU socket. Okay, so uh, that's the machine ready to go back together. However, there is one slight problem. This connector has became, one of the connectors has became a wee bit derped. So I believe I've lost access to the LED shelf. That's not good. However, the rest of the laptop should go back together and work just fine. Okay, so I've put this machine back together. So now I need to connect all the cables here necessary for operating, well, just everything on this half of the machine. So the screen is going to be plugged back in as, as, as are the touchpad buttons and I have a wee golden screw somewhere this is also going to be screwed back home and as soon as I've done that well it's going to be time to reattach the keyboard Screw in the screws at the bottom of the unit, and then we'll be ready for our power on. And now to reattach the keyboard. Now this keyboard has got a an integrated uh, track point, <coughs> and it's all under one ribbon connector. And I must applaud Toshiba for the ease of use of their ribbon connectors. Now all I need to do is drop a screw in there and there and I'll be able to reattach the top strip. So that's the keyboard screwed in. So what I need to do now is um, apply is reattach the strip. Best way to do it is actually bottom first and then just kind of press down on it until it clips into place. There you go. Excellent. Now let's do all the screws at the bottom. Okay, so now we're ready. We can put the battery back in and it will be time for the smoke test. All right, first of all, let's plug it in. Oh, 
And now, well, we've got power from these LEDs, but now, as soon as I find the power button, smoke test! Oh yeah! And now for the moment of truth. Oh yeah, that's an Intel Pentium 3 processor, copper mine, and it's running at 800 megahertz with MMX and SSE extensions with 128 megs of RAM. Well, that concludes this video on upgrading the processor in the Toshiba Satellite 4600. In fact, it's a Satellite Pro 4600. A wee bit more pro now that it's got Pentium power. I mean, full, fully featured Pentium power. I'd like to thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe. Instructions on how to do so will follow while you're at my channel. Please feel free to watch my previous videos if you've not already seen them. And I hope you'll all join me for my next video. So until then, thank you for watching. And good day. Good night. Goodbye.